Hi everybody and welcome to It's a Fair Question. If you've not joined us before then let me introduce myself. My name is Martin and presently I'm serving as the moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. Today I'm going to be chatting with Aftab and Rahil, two of my ministry colleagues within the Church of Scotland. So welcome to It's a Fair Question. Great to meet you two guys, Aftab, Rahil. Uh, thank you for agreeing to, to speak on this programme today. Thank you we much. first met, uh, well, seven years ago now, and in fact it was in the aftermath of uh, a horrific experience that you both came through. That was the bombing of All Saints Church in Peshawar in September 2013. Aftab, can I ask you to begin with, what are your memories of that time? Yeah, uh, that was Sunday morning and uh, I was preparing myself for service here in this church. And uh, uh, on that day, we, we had uh, Boys and Girls Brigade rededication service. And uh, when I was preparing myself, I received a text message that there was a double suicide attack and All Saints Church. Then I turned on television and all Pakistani channels were showing uh, the, the, the area and I knew the people who were there and uh, I, I tried to speak to my family and couldn't get them. And then uh, I managed to uh, speak to somebody and, and my family and I came to church because I didn't want to disappoint uh, Boys Brigade and Girls Brigade for their uh, rededication service. And uh, when I was entering the church, I came to know that my mom also died and uh, uh, my nieces and nephews and cousins and uncles, uh, they, they died. Uh, but I, I came in and uh, took the service and then I said, this has happened, and now I'm going to Peshawar. I can imagine, uh, well, no, let me change that. I can't imagine what that must have been like. Um, and the strength of character you showed still to come and lead worship here is quite something. Rahil, you had a brother who was caught up in that attack, I understand. And still today, he is showing the impacts of the explosion. Can you say a wee bit about how your family was caught up? Yeah, uh, not just my brother, because we both are cousins. Yeah. So his family, my family was there in the worship on that morning. And uh, my brother is, I think, only the one person in that incident that happened is still suffering a lot. And every year he is going through an operation uh, for his, you know, for his, the leg, and there is infection in his leg, so that comes every year and goes through the suffering again and again, and it reminds him of the all incidents and the trauma he's still facing in that moment. And uh, apart from my brother, there were my uncle, there was my uncle and other relatives who were died and many were injured. So. Yeah. I don't suppose one ever properly recovers from something like that, but let me ask you a question, Aftab. And be as honest as you can. Do you harbour a grudge or bitterness or even hatred towards the perpetrators? Or have you found it within yourself, the possibility of forgiving those who were involved in these uh, attacks? When I went there, uh, 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 many people from my family uh, died and uh, others were in hospital. So it was a very difficult time for me. But then I prayed for it. 
And when I came back, uh, I was interviewed by BBC and many other uh, channels and newspapers. The, the thing I told to them at that stage, that was just two, three weeks after that, that I forgive them. Mm -hmm. And they asked, uh, how can you forgive those who killed your mom? I said, that mom taught me when I was young from Bible that this is a Christian message to forgive. Now, let me just push this further, after. Are these just words? No. You, well, I'm supposed to forgive, so I will. Or truly, out of your heart, did you find that forgiveness coming? Yeah, that, that was from my heart. And still, I, 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 I know that they, the people who are involved they don't know. They are just serving their religion. They don't know what they are doing. So uh, they, they, they are either brainwashed or uh, just uh, hired. Uh, we, we don't know. Rahil, you ha have been in Scotland for nine or ten years now, or thereabouts? Yeah. Nine years. Nine years yeah. now, and recently uh, became a British citizen, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So a lot has changed uh, since these years, but are you still aware of what the situation is like for Christians today? Is there still a level of persecution or opposition, and in what ways does that show itself? Mm -hmm. It's a, I think it's getting worse every second day. So day by day, it's getting worse. Not maybe in form of blasphemy, but there are certain other ways they persecute Christians, and uh, not only Christians, other minorities as well, in different ways, like through the, uh, pers uh, through the forced marriages. Nowadays, it is very common in Pakistan that the Muslims, the majority, the authority, uh, they, they forcefully convert Christians, girls, young girls, and they convert them to Islam and they marry them. And this is not the, the will of the Christian girls there, but they, this is the you know, majority what is doing there in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And not only the legal uh, that uh, forced marriages, there are other types of persecutions. It's a, I would say that Christians, uh, for Christians in Pakistan, there is always a sword that is hanging on their heads, mm -hmm. and that is the sword of blasphemy, 295C law. If the people, they have some grudges with anybody in the Muslim community, they, they, they trap them in the blasphemy law, and they took them to the courts, and before court, rather, they kill them. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you have personal experience in this because um, you yourself came to the United Kingdom, first of all, uh, seeking asylum. Uh, you were in fear for your situation and for your family. Uh, are you able to talk a little bit about how that was for you at that time? Yeah. Martin, before I speak about this, can I just mention that the incident, the bomb blast that happened in 2013, I was here and I was an asylum seeker at that time. And uh, the guilt or the, you know, I, I have in still my heart and mind that I couldn't go back to mm -hmm. see my family at that time. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, still I haven't visited Pakistan yet mm -hmm. since 2011. And uh, coming to your question, it said that uh, I was, first of all, the Christians, they don't get jobs in the government sector. And those who get the government job in Pakistan, those Christians who get the government jobs in Pakistan, they are in, the, they are in focus of the other colleagues. And they don't like anybody from the minority to be in the majority, to be in the good posts. So I was inducted and uh, I was appointed as a biology teacher in a school and college. And then I was uh, promoted uh, vice principal there in a high school, secondary school. 
And uh, there, the, when I was promoted to that post, all the other staff was below me, and they were all Muslims. And they thought that why he has become our, our boss or vice principal. And uh, the, in, during that time, they tried to trap me in different ways, you know, in conversations. Their good way is to trap you uh, in conversation uh, in the blasphemy law. Say, what, what, like, they ask you, what are your thoughts about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? So if you say something according to, not according to their will, they just trap you in that. So these were their, you know, different tactics. They were trying to trap me in the blasphemy law. But thankfully, uh, I didn't spoke any, speak anything and uh, I survived. I, but that post, they, uh, they start conspiracy against me and they approach the uh, provincial government, you know, high ups, and uh, I was demoted back to my post. But, uh, and in, during that time, I wasn't doing any evangelism in that institution because that was a Muslim uh, institution. But they, they approached the fanatics and the extremists that he's doing evangelism in school and he's trying to uh, give Bible literature to the Muslim children and he's trying to uh, give them religious Christian education. Mm -hmm. So then the problem started and then I thought, when it was up to only to me, their target was uh, when, but when they uh, came to my family, then I thought that we should leave the country. Yeah. Then we came here. And, and despite all of that, the way your wider family has suffered in many ways through those years, uh, I want to say again, I don't detect from either of you a bitterness uh, or enmity towards Islam. Um, it seems to me more that you would want to be peaceful and, and work for understanding between different peoples. W would that be true, Aftab? Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, I'm involved in uh, interfaith work uh, and uh, even in Pakistan, uh, before I came here, I was a secretary of a group called Faith Friends. Yeah. And uh, we, we uh, used to work together for peacemaking. And uh, here, uh, I have very good relationship with my Muslim friends from Pakistani background or any other background and all other uh, religions. Uh, I don't have any grudges or... Yeah. Yeah. Now, Scotland's a very different country to Pakistan for all kinds of reasons, um, but we are very secular today in 21st century Scotland. How has that been for you? How do you find ministering in Scotland after? Maybe you would answer that first of all. Yeah, uh, this is a very interesting question because when we were in Pakistan, we thought everyone in UK as Christian. Mm. And that, that's what was the general feeling. Uh, and uh, when I came here for studies in 98, 99, then I came to know that even two denominations are sometimes not too close. So yeah, it, it is different from there because in Pakistan, we were a very tiny minority. So we try to work together. And that's why Church of Pakistan was made because uh, we, they all different denominations were very tiny denominations. So they tried to get united to form Church of Pakistan. So here, yeah, it is, it is a secular society and uh, sometimes people don't believe in the existence of God and uh, it is a challenging thing, but uh, we, uh, I'm chaplain for schools and also I'm chaplain for air cadets. So we uh, have, uh, I, I get opportunity to meet uh, young people and in, in my 
way uh, without offending them, we try to con convey a Christian message to them. Uh, and uh, it, it is uh, different, but uh, Lord works in his own way here as well. And uh, there, there are uh, many uh, young people who believe in God and they, they uh, pray to God. And uh, there, there is a hope because this nation, the, the ancestors of uh, Scottish nation went to Pakistan. Uh, and, uh, at that time, it was India, and converted people to Christianity. And my forefathers, my ancestors, were converted uh, through their evangelism because they went to Sialkot area, and my uh, forefathers were from Sialkot area. So that what they did for us. And now God has brought us here to serve him here. So we are, uh, in, a, in a way, we are paying back. <laughs> no, and, and we are more than ready to welcome and accept that. And uh, it's a joy uh, in Scotland now that we have ministers in the Church of Scotland from all parts of the world, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, from Asia and from Africa and from Americas and so many places. Rahil, how are you finding the challenges of ministering in central Scotland today? It, there are a lot of challenges, you know, as we all know, the ministers and the Christian uh, believers, they know the challenges we have. Not many people turn to church, not many people believe in God, atheists and the, but our job is to preach the word of God and to share the gospel. And that's what we, I, I, I am aiming to do in my parishes, to be involved in community, to share the love and the love of God and the grace of God with them. The love that I had received in my life, the grace I had received in my life, it comes through uh, my life to them and by just by being with them by speaking to them, by in conversation, in chatting, or not particularly mentioning God, but sharing the gospel in different ways, in new ways. And uh, in, this, in this pandemic time, the online thing, it, we never had so many people in, uh, when we see the views in our yeah. <laughs> services. So people, they join in, uh, even they are not the mem our members, but they join. And in this way, the love and the gospel is reaching to the okay. yeah, community. So it's the gospel of Jesus Christ, yeah. isn't it? Imagine that someone in Scotland today who really had, knew, had no background in Christian faith and didn't know much about it at all, and they were to say to you, well, who's this Jesus? Tell me one thing about this Jesus. Um, what's the one thing you would tell someone about Jesus, Rahil? It, I would just say that Jesus loves you and he loved me and he loves you and he died for me and he died for you whether you believe it or not but he loves you you know just love is the I think the essence of the Christian message that we can uh, talk that we can share with other people after same or anything different to add to that yeah uh, almost same that uh, through the ministry of mercy, we can show Jesus to people. Mm -hmm. And uh, as uh, you, everyone knows that uh, the, the church is the biggest charitable organization, biggest charity. So all churches are doing their best to share the love of Christ to people. And in this way, we can show Jesus to them. We can say, this is Jesus who loves you, who wants to help you. The question of racism has been very alive in the world in the last months and really was heightened following the killing of George Floyd in the United States. Now, we perhaps would like to think that Scotland was very tolerant and we would never have any issues of racism. And yet, I've been involved with colleagues who have 
sadly told me differently that at times they have experienced racism, even sometimes uh, within church. Uh, can I ask you again, honestly, have you experienced or your family has experienced um, racism within Scotland since you came here? Uh, I came uh, with my family in 2008 and it's been 12 years here. And I thank God that uh, he brought me to this area. We never, never seen racism. I, I used to ask my boys when they were in primary school and high school, but they never uh, told anything that they, they faced any racism in this area. People are very loving, very welcoming. And in, in this town, everybody kn knew that I'm a minister mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they, I, I got respect from everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rahil, your experience? Uh, not directly to me, to my family, to my children, because uh, they, they, they haven't said anything about, the, what, uh, about racism and the, any experience they had. But uh, we knew, we know some of the families, uh, Pakistani families, who have faced racism in Scotland even, but uh, not directly to our families. Aftab, your cross, your wooden cross that you're wearing uh, is, yeah. is very unique. Uh, I'm not sure I've seen one exactly like that. Uh, do you want to say a bit about that cross? Yeah, this cross was made by Diocese of Peshawar after the suicide bombing. And uh, this is called a cross of thorns. And all clergy and, and Peshawar diocese and bishop, they wear a thorn cra cross. And a bishop brought one bigger cross for my church here as well. So this is that it, this is a symbol. It shows that uh, Christians in Pakistan are carrying a cross of thorns. There, there is persecution in every area of life, socially, economically, politically, legally, there is persecution. What would be the things that Christians in this country could do to express solidarity with Christians in Pakistan or in other parts of the world who may struggle on account of their faith? The first thing is uh, that uh, through governments, if uh, you, uh, the government, our church, approach the government of Pakistan to, to show the solidarity with Christians in Pakistan. And the second thing is that the Christians are most persecuted people in the world. And when it, it's very hard for Christians to come to these countries. There are asylum seekers coming from all over the world, but very few Christians can come. Sometimes they are not, uh, financially they are not good to, to buy a ticket or show some money in their account to get visa. And if they come here, and ask for asylum, there is a very, very hard procedure. And sometimes people just go back and die there <laughs> or suffer here for many, many years. Some, some, there are some people we know if their case is pending for more than 10 years now. So, there should be some relaxation, as, as there is for Ahmadis coming from Pakistan. There is a relaxation for them. Why not Christians? Rahil, we've seen very recently on our television cameras heartbreaking pictures of families and groups of people coming up in very small boats onto the south coast of England and so on. 
You must relate to that because you came here yourself, first of all, seeking asylum. How does it make you feel when you see the desperation uh, in the faces of those people? Yeah, it, I think there is, we need to see the genuineism in that. Uh, some are desperate just to come here and live here and do the jobs and send money back. But there are people mostly who have got problems in, the, in, in their back country. So uh, I would say that uh, uh, people, it varies with the case to case situation. So, uh, but when I see they travel in boats and the boats sometimes they, they turn over and they, you know, sometimes die in that process, that's really uh, upsetting me because it, there must be some problem with them in yeah. their country and they, they, have, they have fled from their country. So it, at least government should uh, listen to them and then decide. It's the government job to decide whether to give asylum. Yeah. yeah, nobody wants to leave the homeland, their own homeland, but if they, they suffer, then they, sometimes they have to. Yeah. Yeah, nobody's going to risk their lives yeah. or, or their yeah. family's yeah. lives just yeah. to come on a holiday or something yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Aftab, Rahil, we're just about out of time and uh, the time always passes so quickly in these conversations and I thank you for sharing so openly. We've touched on some very important subjects. I want to recognise your faithfulness and the love that comes from you. You spoke about that love and forgiveness uh, which surely is so important in the world today, rather than bitterness and revenge and anger and so on. I wonder, Aftab, if you may just finish up with just one thought, a message for people that might be tuning in on this programme today. Uh, as Christian and as Christian from Pakistan, who has seen persecution and uh, saw his family suffering there, I can say to our Christian brothers and sisters here that you are very fortunate that you are in this peaceful land. Mm. So just don't take it for granted. Jesus loves you and share his love with others. Thank you. Thank you, Aftab. Rahil, how would you finish up? Uh, just I would like to say that uh, this country is wonderful and the ministry here is wonderful. People are welcoming. And now, as I am a British citizen now, so I feel one of them. Mm. And it's a big, you know, a, a big excitement and big, but there is a challenge to work in a parish. So I would say that uh, we must try to share the love and gospel of our Jesus Christ with others, not through word of mouth, maybe it's not possible, but through our gestures, through our actions, mm -hmm. through our talks, just any way you mm -hmm. can share mm -hmm. yeah, and support our community. Rahil, Aftab, thank you so much for sharing with me this afternoon. Blessing uh, for you and your families and your ministries at this time. Thank, Thank you. you. And to you as well. Thank you.